What's up, Navigation Traders? Welcome to this week's video update for pro members. We're going to go over all the alerts and all of our current positions. Before we do that, let's jump over to the community and talk about who got caught being hot this week. This week goes to one of our mates from down under, Australia. And uh, Dan is a, uh, he has posted that he's a newer trader on his profile, but he has, uh, that's not stopped him from jumping into the conversations, answering questions, sharing trade ideas, asking some great questions. So love the engagement, Dan. Keep up the good work. You got caught being hot. All right, so let's go to the alerts. Obviously, Monday was a holiday with Memorial Day. So first alert was the 26th on Tuesday. So right here. So our first trade was a closing of an iron duck in SPY. So with the with the price move higher, price kind of scaled up the duck beak. And so we went ahead and booked that a little bit early, closed that out, booked a, booked a beak profit in SPY. Next trade was an opening trade in SPX. So we added a weekly double calendar. We had already had one that we put on with, I think it was when it was at seven or eight days in the front week. Uh, added in the same cycle with the front week being six, back week being, uh, excuse me, front week being three, back week being six. And so we, at that point, had two weekly double calendars on. And then um, I'll get to the, I'll get to the closing alerts here in a minute. Uh, next trade, opening adjusting trade. So we added an iron condor in gold. Uh, did it, you know, we like to stay with kind of 30 to 60 days, but we were in that 63 day range at the time we put this on and we were over 40% of max profit on, on the, uh, one in the previous cycle, the one with 30 days to expiration. So we went ahead and booked that and, and put this one on, not a big deal, but not a big difference between 60 and 63 D 63 days, just slightly longer than we typically do. But, uh, let's take a look at where we're at now in gold. I mean, price is kind of like. Uh, the rest of the market. I mean, price has kind of stayed in a pretty uh, stable range. I mean, these are actually pretty big swings relative, but in a pretty steady, uh, steady box there. So let's take a look at this position. Pretty close to where we put it on, dead centered, not much P uh, P and L, and so we're just waiting the waiting for the theta to decay in gold. Next trade, opening trade in SPY. So we put on another iron duck in SPY, uh, added this one at the 14 days to expiration. And so let's take a look at that. We've still got that one on. So if we look at SPY, so that one's right here. And you can see price has already moved higher. <coughs> Excuse me. Price has already moved higher since we put it on. So we're up here in the duck beak. Now we still have, remember, what I like to do is put the, put the break even right here is it right here on the base of the of the duck beak you can see we still have about a 24 percent probability that price could get back into that duck head uh, so we're not looking to take this off too quickly but if price does run higher to where we get under you know 10 15 percent chance of price getting back to the back to the duck head to that max profit area then we'll then we could book it early uh, we've got a beak profit potential of about 119 bucks on this trade with a max profit of uh, 819. So definitely don't want to take it off too early, but at the same time, if this thing runs higher with very little chance of getting back, might as well just book that profit and rede redeploy that capital. Uh, I want to look to add in, you know, at least one more duck in SPY next week. Would prefer to do that on a down day where we get a spike in implied volatility as well as, you know, get our break evens further away from price. So that's the plan in SPY. While we're here, we still ha we also have a, a an iron condor in SP in SPY. Price is hanging out here in the upper end of the range. Uh, I'd like to next week. Let's see. This one has how many days? Twenty one. Yeah, twenty one days to expiration. So next week, I'm going to add a new iron condor in SPY out in this cycle, uh, in the July cycle. So we'll. Layer onto that. Hopefully, we get a little bit of a down move, and we can book this one, and then continue to manage the uh, the July piece once we put that on. And, and if if price moves higher, I may put it on too. So I'm not going to necessarily wait for a down move, but next week sometime we'll we'll be putting on a uh, another iron condor in spy. Also have this bunker in spy. So price has run up a little bit on us since we put this on, but looking f uh, this holding this for that short delta exposure for that big potential move lower. And so obviously we've been in kind of a big 
kind of a big jump up and then kind of a grind higher. And, and again, I say grind, but these are pretty sizable moves relative to what we had seen just a few months ago. So, uh, you know, just kind of continuing to manage. We've got, um, just as far as overall short delta goes, we've got, uh, we're at about two and a half to one on our short delta versus our theta. So, and that's beta weighted to SPY. So we, we're definitely short. Uh, a down move will definitely help uh, our portfolio. And I'll show you as we go through uh, quite a few of these short delta positions. Um, but, um, you know, we can still, we can still manage if this thing continues to go, you know, sideways to higher as well. So that's the plan there. Next trade, closing trade in SPY. So we had another iron duck on in SPY. Uh, these options expired on Thursday. And so price had run up the beak, but we didn't close it out early because we were, we were trying to get filled for under a dollar, which is with, what the width of our call spread was. And so if we, you know, we didn't get filled for that. So we just went ahead and let it expire with, with toss anyway. Uh, there's no exercise or assignment fee. You just keep that beak profit and, uh, and, and move on. So that's what we did there. Closing trade in four slash six E the euro. So this is one that we had on, um, and we had to roll and adjust several times, but but staying sticking with those mechanics got us back to profitability. So we went ahead and closed that out. Booked uh, uh, it was two hundred some dollars. I can't remember the exact amount, but a couple over a couple hundred bucks on that trade. So we're out of six E. We've got a rolling adjusting trade in ES. So we rolled uh, one set of our long put verticals in ES. We were down to one day to expiration. So we went ahead and rolled that out to 50 days to extend that duration, keep that short delta in our portfolio. We've still got two pieces on here. Uh, this one is in the cycle with how many days to expiration? This one's got 21. And so you can see prices out of our range here. So we need some down movement to get back into range. And then this one, the one we just rolled, is pretty close to where we put it on. So it's inside in, in range here, just holding that for, for potential downside exposure. Next alert, DE. Uh, rolled one set of our short call verticals from June 20 or from 22 days to expiration out to 50. Now that's not the reason that we uh, rolled. It was more because uh, price had ran higher with uh, small chance of getting back into range and we didn't want to just sit there and let theta decay so we just went ahead and rolled this out uh, adjusted the strikes accordingly so let's take a look at de so we've got two pieces we've got the one still in june that's a little out of range and then the one that we rolled to july which is right here so pretty close to where we put it on uh, again just holding those for that for that downside that short delta exposure Opening trade in SPX, so we opened up a new weekly double calendar in SPX. Did this one with eight days and 11 days in the back week. And so let's take a look at that. You can see we've, uh, we're have we up about $89 since we put that on. So just holding this and uh, again, we'll take we'll manage this like we always do. We'll take this off um, either, either one day to expiration or zero DTE. Uh, or if if price you know busts out of range, we're going to get out. You know we're only we're only in this thing for about six under seven hundred dollars per contract. So you know if we get down about four hundred bucks or maybe even a little less, we'll just we'll just bail on this one. But uh, uh, otherwise, we will hold up until near expiration and see what happens. If you go through expiration up until you know, here's six, four. So here's one DTE and then here's the day of expiration. So hoping to book a few four, five, six hundred bucks on the trade, depending on what volatility does. Next alert, closing trade in SPX. So this is our other weekly double calendar. So we had these two that were both expired today on Friday. And so we went ahead and closed those out. Now, the one that we closed on Thursday, it was kind of hanging out in the on the break even. So if we look at this one as an example, it was kind of hanging out right out here. So we were down a couple hundred bucks. And so we went ahead and closed this out because what I didn't want ha to happen is if we wake up, the market gaps higher, and then we're taking max loss on this thing. We don't, we don't want to do that. Um, and so we went ahead and closed that one out, took a small loss. Now, in hindsight, I mean, had we waited even 30 minutes, the market kind of tailed off on 
on Thursday, got back into range. We could have booked it for a profit, and then we woke up this morning, Mark was down even lower, so we would have booked a nice profit. But you can't trade in hindsight. You really have to, you, we look at this from a standpoint of, okay, once we get to one day's to expiration or zero days to expiration, what is our risk reward uh, proposition? Meaning, you know, if price is hanging out right here, yeah, if it goes lower, we can we could book a profit. But if it if it goes higher, we're going to take a much larger loss. So when you get down to that short of duration, you really want to kind of have that risk reward mentality in mind to figure out: Do I take it off now? Do I wait till the last day? And that's that's kind of the thought process of what we're going through when we're either deciding to keep or close uh, on one or zero days to expiration. So hopefully that makes sense. I've 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 talked about that several times, so I want to keep uh, keep reiterating that, that that's what we're doing. Lastly, closing trade in SPX. So that was our that was our second one. So this was the one on Thursday, and then this is the one we closed today on Friday. Uh, booked a nice profit, six hundred fifty five dollars on this one. Uh, small loser on the one we closed Thursday. So overall, continues to be profitable. And so those are all the alerts. Let's take a look at some of the other positions. I already mentioned ES, gold, Natty Gas. Okay, so here's Natty Gas. Price is right here. We're up over 1900 bucks since we did this roll on this piece of the trade. We're still working our way back to profits overall on the on the trade. Uh, but, you know, I mean, we've got a max profit here of 4700 <clears throat> We're up 1900 so we want to go ahead and roll this out, collect that credit, and extend duration. We've got 27 days to expiration, but we may not wait until 21. We will probably do this early next week and just roll this out to the next cycle, which would be... Toss calls it August. Um, I think um, Tastyworks calls it July. It'd be nice if they kind of standardize that, but... Uh, anyway, the ones right now, they've got 60 days to expiration. So next week, they'll have about 57 uh, on Monday. So we'll, we'll, we will look to potentially roll this position out, probably use the same strikes unless we have a big move over the weekend and uh, just continue to manage it as a straddle, uh, get some more theta decay and work our way back to profits in Natty. Bonds, uh, bonds had to move higher today. They were We did have a decent amount of profit on this piece, um, still do. Uh, not as much, but um, you know we, we've still got a lot of premium in both the puts and the, and then obviously on the uh, calls, got a lot of room to the downside here. So just continuing to manage this, we've still got some decent amount of time in bonds, 28 days. Uh, so either at the end of next week or early the following week, week we'll look to roll that out, extend duration, collect the credit, continue to uh, work our ba way back to profits in bonds. ZW wheat. We've got an iron condor. Price is hanging out here pretty close to center, just waiting for some more theta decay. And then we've got a lot of our short delta positions. Apple is out of range, needs some downside movement to get back in. Uh, we'll we'll be rolling the price continues higher. We'll roll this out to July. I mentioned DE, DIA. So we've got one in June still that's way out of range. Now markets are closed, so that that PL graph is, is off, but uh, still a decent ways out of range. And then our July piece uh, is is out of range as well. So again, need some down movement in those. FXI, we've got a bunker. Price is hanging out right here. We're down a tiny bit. Uh, need a swift move lower in FXI to help to uh, benefit that position. IWM, we've got two pieces on here. We've got the one in June, and then we've got the one in July. We'll, uh, we'll be rolling probably the one in June out to July next week since price is so far out of range. And what I look like, what I look at here to determine when I say it's it's kind of far out of range is, I mean, if you look at the just the gray shaded box, that is the ex, uh, expected move, right? Let me get the dates right here. So this is on the July piece. So it's still well within the expected move for this to get back into range. Um, there's a 70 a 72, uh, about a 68% chance, excuse me, of a one standard deviation move. So that's the probability range. Um, and that's up or down, right? So uh, still a little bit of a chance. If price moves higher, we don't want to just let the theta decay out of this trade. So that's why we, that's why we roll. Uh, this one, you know, so this one is in June. This is June 20th. 
And so you can see we're we're outside that expected move. So you know if if into into next week, if we unless we get a quick move lower, if we make a move higher, I'm going to go ahead and roll this out, get back into a, th a positive theta position, and continue to keep that short delta exposure in our portfolio. QQQs, uh, these are both of them combined. Obviously, price out of range there, need some downside. SMH, we've got two pieces here. One is a bunker, and I mentioned in kind of the morning updates in the community, uh, you know, we're starting to see a little bit of a sag in the PL line. So we're gonna have to make a pretty significant move lower just to get back to get back to profit. So <clears throat> we probably won't wait all the way till uh, 60 days before expiration. So these expire 822. So June 22nd would be 60 days to expiration where we, you know, we, we want to be out of these. We'll probably actually take this one off even a little sooner and, uh, you know, just take that, take that loss and then, ex and then put a, a, another bunker on with further duration uh, to look, help capture a potential down move. Mention SPX, mention SPY, XBI. We've got a, this adjusted short strangle that we've been managing. Come on, toss update. We're running a little slow today. Uh, price is hanging out here in the upper end of the range. Uh, if we look at the untested side of the puts, we've still got a little bit of premium left in there, so I haven't rolled those up yet. We're in June, so next week, if price continues higher, we will roll those puts up and roll the entire spread out to July. And then XLK, another short delta position, uh, just looking for some downside to get back into range there. So that's all the positions. Those are all the alerts. I just wanted to mention a couple other things in relation to just the overall market. I mean, this you know this week, look at the looking at the S and P's. I mean, this just looks you know short week, four days, but this just looks like kind of a you know slow grind higher. But these daily moves were actually pretty crazy from a standpoint of just the price action. If we go to uh, an intraday chart, so let's just go to a five minute chart. What you'll see is let's go back to so here's Tuesday so the shaded area is the overnight session and then the black is the daily session so you know we we had this up move overnight you know after Memorial Day weekend and then Tuesday during the day pretty much down look like look like we we're getting some momentum to the downside overnight Wednesday up 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 market opens tanks oops market opens and it tanks and then late morning rip rips your face off back to back to new highs for the day overnight session on thursday just kind of choppy and then um thursday during the day uh, looked like this thing was going to really rip higher and then it just fell out of bed and broke new lows of the day you know so we're 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 just seeing we're not seeing any kind of trend intraday it's it's very head fakey you know today was another kind of head fake Friday, right? I mean, you know, price started out, S&Ps were down like 30, 20, 30, I can't remember, at least 20. And then just, uh, you know, about what time is this? About, you know, right before noon, boom, market just shot higher. So the market does not know what it wants to do. I mean, it, it still continues to grind higher. Um, and and that's kind of the path of least, rev, uh, path of least resistance, it appears. But man, I mean, any, you know, just keep in mind, I mean, you know, if the world's starting to open back up, right? A lot of things are starting to, restaurants, retail, youth sports, you know, everything's starting to kind of open slowly back up. But, you know, if, if, if something comes out to where, you know, there's a potential, um, you know, whether it's perceived or real outbreak and, you know, the, the uh, municipalities start shutting things back down, that's going to, I think that's going to cause a big ruckus in the markets. Um, hopefully that doesn't happen. I don't want to see that happen, but you know, and then there's the, there's the trade war stuff with China going on now still and, and a lot of other things. So just keep your positions nimble. Uh, I would suggest having some short Delta. We certainly do. Uh, and, and that's how we're going to play it. So hope everybody has a fantastic weekend. Talk to you next week.